All right, friends. I'm going to mute myself. All right, friends. So we're going to go ahead and invite individuals that are coming in for class. It's going to go out through Class Dojo first. Make sure I got everybody. And then we'll get started with literacy. And then once I have all the links set out where they need to go, we'll go ahead and turn that chat on, start taking attendance chat a little bit, check in, make sure that everyone understood math, that there's no confusion. Okay. Okay, so that link is out. We'll go ahead and put it on Google Classroom. So if you're here, yay, welcome. We'll get started in just a moment. I'm gonna go put this up on YouTube. Or just on, we're on YouTube. <laughs> we're gonna put it up on Google Classroom. And then we'll get started reading about some birds. We did dogs, we did cats, now we're going to do some birds. All right, that's posted. We'll go ahead and turn this chat on. Alrighty, so if you don't see the chat, go ahead and refresh. I should kind of generate that chat, and we will see you soon. As you guys chat, I will go ahead. Hello, birthday Michaela. All right, so let's see. I've got Ali. Hello, sir. I've got Katrina and Jacob. Hello, guys. I've got Aya, good morning. Michaela and Josiah. I've got Faiz, Ashley Rara. I've got Zora, good morning. Jenna, good morning, welcome back. Javier, welcome. Alexa, welcome back. Shelby, hello. Kira, hello. Good 
more to Miss Kaylee. We're waiting for Mr. Rad to come on back. Thank you for being patient. Zaleem, hello. Micah, welcome back. Tiana, welcome back. So we're just going to wait for a few friends. We started a little bit early just to allow for friends to come on back, log in. I'm watching the chat. Make sure that you've got your literacy pulled up. We are reading about birds today. We seem to be doing a whole animal theme this week, which is kind of exciting. Hello, Ray. Welcome back. So we'll go ahead and take attendance. Probably about 10, 20. Give people time to roll in. Give people a five-minute window to come on aboard our learning train. Was everyone able to finish their math? Welcome back, Rara. I got you. Okay. Hello, Devin. Welcome back. Hello, Aiden. <laughs> nice smiley, Javier. Very inventive. I like its nose. Hi, Ray. Were you able to finish the math okay? Hi, Sama. Welcome back. Perfect. Thank you, Aiden. No worries, Rara Kalise. Welcome back. All right, DJ. Good morning. Faiz, yeah, Sister Sister is from the 90s. You gotta love the 90s, man. The TV shows were on point. It's about four more minutes. We'll wait for friends to pop online. All right, RC, let's roll. So we'll give it three more minutes and then we'll go ahead and take attendance and then we'll get ready to do literacy. The Brady Bunch was very good. Brady Bunch was earlier than the 90s though. Also a very good show. Hi Khadijah, welcome back sweetie. <laughs> That's a fun smiley Devin, it looks like Herbie.
Ayanon. Hi, Ty. Welcome back. Learning literacy, getting ready to do some birds. So have your literacy ready to go, guys. If you can see the text, cool, have it there. You are reading about brainy birds today. Go ahead and type in the box one thing that you know about birds. Type in the box one thing you know about birds. Hi, Avery. Welcome, welcome. So Avery, I'm expecting participation today, sir. I'd love to see what's going on inside your head. They do fly. Goffins or birds can fly. They have wings, true fact. They have wings. So ladies and gentlemen, type in the box one thing that you know about birds. Hi, Kian. Kian, can you go join Mr. Rad's small group? Kian, can you go join Mr. Rad's small group? Yeah, they chirp. They have feathers. Rara, that's an interesting fact. I actually don't know that statistic. I'd have to look it up. So one more minute and we'll go through and we'll take attendance. I know sometimes friends roll in after that five minute window. They do. Some birds make nests. Zor, true. There's lots of different kinds. RC, yes, they can be very mischievous. Hi, Hamza. Yes, some of them do have nests. Oh, Ray, I like it. It looks like Dobby from Harry Potter. Oh, thank you very much, Micah, but unfortunately no one wants to hear me sing. I leave that to my husband. He sings much better. Hello, Guy. Good morning. Yes, Javier. It looks like Dobby. I agree. I miss Dobby. Cheers for Dobby. Do, 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 do. Thank you. Thank you. Hunger Games. <laughs> All righty. We're going to go ahead and close down fun time chat. We're going to close down fun time chat. If you're ready to do some academic taco, you had to give me an okay. Shut down ac or fun talk. Let's go academic. Give me an okay if you're ready to go. Give me an okay if you're ready to go. Looking at that chat, we're going to roll up all of our fun conversations. Give me an okay if you're ready to rock. Thank you, friends. Thank you, friends. One okay is totally fine. One okay is totally fine. Thank you, RC. Thank you, Zalim. Javier, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Aiden. All right, we're going to go through and take, no, uh, take attendance. So when you hear your name, just say hi in the box. No emojis, just say hi. Hi is fine. Hi, hello, and how are you? Here we go. I saw Zalim. I saw Ali. I saw Aya and Rara. I saw Zora and Aiden. I saw Jacob. I saw Hamza and Ray. I saw Kira and Shelby. I've got Avery and Kian. I saw Khalees. Lexi, if you're here, say hi for me, please. I saw Michaela and Sama. I saw Micah. If Nils, if you are here, say hi, please. I've got Ty and Javier. I've got Faiz and Hanan. I saw Devin and Tiana. I saw DJ and Jenna. I saw Alexa and Josiah. I saw Kaylee and Guy. I saw RC and Ashley and Katrina and Khadija. So just missing Miss Lexi. Lexi, when you roll up, just say hi or I'm going to be looking out for you. All right, friends, let's take a look at our list so far. 
Let's see where we should be. Keep in mind, you're playing Reflex until that green light. Many of you sent me pictures. So excited to see our friends doing that awesome Reflex. So Reflex math is one that could already be done. Flipgrid Civil Review have already posted and done your two peer responses. Good job. Remember, you're doing walk like a reader today. You are going to tell me what book you're reading or have read last, and you're going to tell me a little bit about it. My goal is to learn a little bit more about you as a reader by seeing what books you're into, what books you're currently reading, and what you can tell me about it. So Prodigy is also one that you could already have done. Remember, you're answering 20 questions only. Even if you want to know where you're at, just send me a class dojo message, and I'm happy to tell you right away. Math, many of you already sent me your notes. Thank you very much. And you've already completed your activity. High fives, everyone. Boom. Super, super proud of you. We're going to go ahead and roll into literacy right now. We are going to read all about birds. So let's go ahead. We're going to move to literacy. So here we go. My first read through, what do I do? Type it in the box. First read through, what do I do? Type it in the box. First read through, what do we do? Type it in the box. First read through, what do we do? Type it in the box. Ooh, I see many of us remember. Fantastic. All right. So we have got unknown words. Good, good, good. What about the second read through? Second read through, what do we do? Type it in the box. Second read through, what do we do? Type it in the box. Second read through, what do we do? Type it in the box. Second read through, what do we do? Type it in the box. Javier, good job. RC, good job. Zora, great. Michaela, great. Look at all these fantastic friends remembering. Good job, everybody. Yes. So we are going to do questions, interesting details, and connections. Now we are going to do the last read through. What do we do on read through number three? What do we do for read through number three? Type in the box. What do we do for number three? Type in the box. What do we do for read through number three? Good job. Excellent. Yes. So we need, good job, Aiden, main idea. Good job. So we're going to go ahead and get that green ready to go. In the box, if you're ready to get started, go ahead and give me an OK. Type in the box if you're ready to get going, give me an OK. <coughs> Thank you, Aya. Aya's ready to go. Lexa Ray, they're ready to go. Hamza, Shelby, ready to go. Aiden, Avery, Jacob, ready to go. Javier, Rara, Zora, very good. Faiz, Micah, Guy, Khalees, let's go. Good job. Here we go. Ali, RC, good job. All right, I'm going to get my green ready. All right, we are looking for unknown words. Here we go. If you, oh, if an intelligent, engaging, and trainable pet bird is what you seek, then there are many species of birds to choose from. All birds are highly intelligent, can learn to solve puzzles, play games, perform tricks, and even vocalize. Some of the most captivating pet bird species are known especially for their teachability. 
There are a few species, however, that seem to particularly enjoy trick training and performing fun skills. If there is a word in there that you don't know or can't easily define, type it in the box for me. If there is a word that you can't easily define, type it in the box for me. Ooh, captivating. Very good. Vocalize. <clears throat> Remember, vocalize is where you make sound. RC, very good. Captivating. It holds your attention. Teachability. Just like you guys, teachability means that you're easy to teach. Because you guys are fantastic. Good job. If there's no other words, give me a text emoji that you're ready to rock. If there's no other words, give me a text emoji that you're ready to rock. Good job, Avery. Proud of you. Good participation, sir. Give me a text emoji that you're ready to rock. Give me a text emoji that you're ready to rock. If I particularly enjoy something, that means I like it a good amount. Oh, look at those text emojis coming in. Good job, everyone. Thank you so much. What good listeners. Fantastic. Good job, good job. All right, let's move down to <clears throat> the Goffin's Cockatoo. I'm going to get my green ready. Here we go, Goffin's Cockatoo. Goffin's Cockatoos are not shy birds. Like a typical cockatoo, most enjoy being held, are friendly and sociable. Goffins can also be a bit mischievous and are quick learners. Don't be surprised to discover when your bird learns to open the cage <clears throat> after seeing you unlatch the lock. A pet Goffins needs a steady supply of toys and appropriate items to chew and destroy. They need toys that challenge, such as puzzle toys and those that involve taking things apart or undoing knots. These birds do tend to be more needy than other pet parrot species, and an owner should set boundaries early on. Otherwise, the bird might scream for attention. Instead of giving this fun-loving bird nonstop attention, toys and other enrichment opportunities with some attention will allow the bird to learn to keep itself entertained when its family is away. Type in the box a word that you do not know or don't uh, have the ability to easily define. So type in the box a word that you cannot easily define. Good job. So I've got enrichment. Enrichment is like extra fun stuff, something that's like going to mentally stimulate you, kind of like last year when I would give you those logic puzzles. So let's see, are there any words in here that we don't know? Boundaries. Think of them like rules, like, like rules. So like we have classroom rules where we have these rules to keep us safe and the boundaries will help the birds stay safe. So I've got enrichment, good, 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 sociable. So they really like to be around either other uh, people. They like to be around other individuals. So I've got sociable. Exactly. Boundaries are lines you don't want to cross. Good, good, good. All right. If we are good, give me a smiley face. If we are good, give me a smiley face. Give me a text emoji that you're ready to rock. Give me a text emoji that you're ready to rock. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. 
Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, RC. Thank you, Javier. Michaela, thank you. Zora DJ, thank you. Let's roll on down to the macaw. These are those super pretty birds that you often see performing tricks and stuff at uh, like zoos and at SeaWorld. I know we used to have them in our pets rule show. There was like three or four that would fly down at certain uh, increments in the show to uh, certain types of music. So that was always fun. So one emoji is good, friends. One emoji is good. Here we go. Let's read about macaws. I have my pen ready to go. All right, here we go. Macaws are the second most intelligent bird species in the world. In fact, their intelligence is thought to be at the same level as a two-year-old child. They are capable of logical and predictive thinking. Experiments have shown macaws hide their food if they think another bird might steal from them. They will go through their food, pick out their favorites, and toss out their lesser-liked ones with a swipe of their beaks. If it's a favorite fruit or toy is hidden among other objects, a macaw will be aware of the trickery and will happily hunt through the jumble to find it. They can even showcase emotions, pouting when denied treats, showing jealousy towards other humans, and often show love through affectionate nibbles. I like to call them love nibbles. <laughs> My dog does them too. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Sama, there's like a 10-second lag on this stuff. So I tend to repeat myself a lot. It's all good. So go ahead and type in the box. Type in the box a word that you do not know or cannot easily define. Trickery is good. So trickery like a trick. Jumble, very good. Good job, Avery. A jumble's like a mess. Pouting. Just like kids, too, if they don't get something that they want, they can be like, mer. Right? They do this whole thing. Mm. They pout. Nibbles. Done with the mouth. Using teeth lightly. Not biting. Biting's like, ar, 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 ar. Let's see, any other words that we see? Affectionate. Affection's like what you give your parents and your grandparents and your family members. Things like hugs, kisses, cuddles. That's affection, where you show love to someone else. And so these birds like to give affectionate little love nibbles. My dog likes to do them too, but she's also a licker. <laughs> Yes, nibbles. Om nom nom. <laughs> any other words or are we okay? If you're good, tell me okay. If you've got any other words, go ahead and type them out. I definitely see one. What word do you think is in predictive? Predictive makes me think of another word. Predictive. What word does that sound like? Predictive. That makes me think of something we do in reading, where we try and guess what comes next. What's that word called? Predictive. What's that word called? There's a word in the predictive that makes me think of another word. Predict, yes. Khalees, good. Aya, good. Yes, I thought it was just me. Predict. So if they have predictive thinking, they can predict what comes next. Or they can predict what you might do or where you might hide something. Macaws are very, very smart. Very good, everybody. Yes, so predict. Fantastic. All right, pens at the ready. Let's move to the next one. Ollie, very good. Shelby, very good. So this one's not necessarily a pet, but this is the smartest bird in the world. 
So ravens and crows are under another branch of a type of bird that are considered to be the smartest in the world. So we're going to read about ravens and crows. Here we go. Ravens and crows are frequently considered to be the smartest of the bird family. Logic and puzzle solving comes naturally to these highly intelligent scavengers. These birds can make customized tools, count to five, and have an uncanny memory for human faces. In fact, they can remember if a specific person is a threat. They are second to humans in terms of intelligence and are smarter than apes. In addition to this, some can imitate human speech, roam around in groups, use gestures, show empathy towards one another, and are adaptable. However, it's illegal to own these birds as pets as they are migratory birds that fly long distances and form strong family bonds. Go ahead and type in the box a word that you do not know or cannot easily define. Yes, very good. So I see imitate, where you copy something. So that means that they can hear you say a word and they can say it back to you once they learn it. Migratory means that they travel, oftentimes long distances. Yes, Ray, that's very true. A group of crows is called a murder of crows. We've got uncanny. Let's see what else we got before they move. Gestures. So I know you can't, I can't see you, but you can see me. Go like this. If I do this at you, what does it mean? Type it in the box. If I do this at you, what does it mean? So if I do this at you, what does it mean? This, which yes, is the universal way of saying hi or goodbye. This is a gesture. So they have the ability to use gestures too. Right. This is like hi or goodbye. Salutations even. All right. Empathy. Empathy is like, if I saw someone get hurt, I would feel bad for that person. My ability to feel for someone else is empathy. So yes, empathy. Okay, any other words? Are you okay? If you are okay, give me a text emoji. If you are okay, give me a text emoji. If you are okay, give me a text emoji. If you are okay, give me a text emoji. Fantastic. I got my small group over here, so I'm just trying to monitor them too. Oh, RC is correct. Time to switch to blue. Let's go back up. Switch to blue. So now what we're going to do is we're going to read through and we're going to try and come up with a question that we have, maybe something that sparks our curiosity when we start thinking about, maybe an interesting detail or a connection that we have. All right, here we go. If an intelligent, engaging, and trainable pet bird is what you seek, then there are many species of birds to choose from. All birds are highly intelligent, can learn to solve puzzles, play games, perform tricks, and even vocalize. Some of the most captivating pet bird species are especially known for their teachability. There are few species, however, that seem to particularly enjoy trick training, 
and performing fun skills. Go ahead and find a quote that you like and you can type your question in the box, type your interesting detail, or type your connection. I'm going to look for one too. So I'm going to come over to my annotations. I'm going to put a number so that I don't get lost and confused. And I'm going to write out now my question or my comment. For me, I'm coming up with a connection. So I'm going to write, this makes me think of the emus that were in pets rule at SeaWorld as well as the flamingos that were trained. So I automatically remember all of those awesome birds that I saw at SeaWorld. So let's see which questions you came up with. I'm going to go back and scroll through the text real fast. So what makes a bird smarter or intelligent? Very good, Faiz. Are there birds that are not as intelligent, Khalees? Fun, fun fact, if I remember right, there used to be a bird called a dodo, and they would follow each other off cliffs and stuff. So, yeah, sometimes there's not bright birds, but that's why dodos aren't around anymore. They're extinct. <laughs> but who knows? That might just be an urban legend. There might be another reason the dodo went off. I just think that's, if that's a true story, that's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Makes me think of the porgs from C uh, Star Wars. How do you know that a bird has teachability? Good, good, good. Jacob has an interesting detail. I've seen videos when birds learn tricks. It learned how to ride a bird bike and falls down when the person points to a gun. So smart. Very true. Dodos are pretty cute. The pictures of them are pretty adorable. Yep, the dodo is extinct. They are pretty cute, though. I will give it to you. They are pretty cute. <laughs> that's where the word dodo comes from. I would bet. I'd have to Google it, but I bet that's where that comes from. Okay, type any other questions, interesting details, or connections in the box. If you're good to go, give me that text emoji, and we'll be moving forward. We'll go back into Goffin's Cockatoo. What makes the majority of birds intelligent? Very good, Zaleem. So if he still needed three here. Is a chicken a bird? Yes. Technically, it's poultry. But yes, it's a bird. It goes into all of the characteristics of what a bird is. Lays eggs, has feathers. Good job, RC. All right, so let's read about the Goffin's Cockatoo. Get that blue ready to go, and let's go ahead and read. Here we go. Goffin's cockatoos are not shy birds. Like a typical cockatoo, most enjoy being held, are friendly and sociable. Goffins can be a bit mischievous and are quick learners. Don't be surprised to discover when your bird learns how to open their cage after seeing you unlatch the lock. A pet Goffins needs a steady supply of toys and appropriate items to chew and destroy. They need toys that challenge, such as puzzle toys and those that involve taking things apart or undoing knots. These birds do tend to be more needy than other pet parrot species, and an owner should set boundaries early on. 
Otherwise, the bird might scream for attention. Instead of giving this fun-loving bird nonstop attention, toys and other enrichment opportunities with some attention will allow the bird to learn to keep itself entertained when its family is away. Go ahead and type in the box. An interesting detail, a connection, or a question. Ray, that sounds like a good connection for when we get down to crows and ravens. Why do they need toys to destroy? Good. I'm going to go find one too. So that's going to be my number two. Why are these birds shy? Good. Or why are some birds shy? I'm going to have a connection to... My connection is these birds sound similar to the cat behavior we read about yesterday. Let's see what else we got. If we set boundaries, will they listen good? How long does it take for them to destroy one toy? What is an average Goffin's IQ? DJ, excellent question. RC has a connection. My bird sleeps in his food bowl. Silly bird. If we set boundaries, will they listen? Good job, Faiz. When it says quick learners, do they learn how to unlatch the lock a few hours later? Good job, Ray. Why are some birds scared when we walk past them? Good, but make sure that your questions stay with the text where we're reading. So that might be a good question to Google after we're done reading. I think so. Yeah, it's probably true. So anyone else, type your question, your interesting detail, or your connection in the box, please. Why would they destroy their toys? Good job, Avery. I actually read an article yesterday that said a Goffin's cockatoo, when left alone, this guy trained it to take apart an entire tricycle, and then he would put the tricycle back together again. And he would actually do this repeatedly whenever the uh, cockatoo was left on his own because it was so amusing for the cockatoo. So the guy would just put the tricycle back together again and then let this, the bird tear it apart. Faiz, that's a good question, too. Would the Goffin prefer to be alone or with someone? Well, it says they're not shy birds, so my guess is they like being around people. We'll give them one more minute, then we'll move on. Will they know how to unlatch the lock without watching you to do it? Ooh, Shelby, that's a good question. Could they figure it out on their own? Maybe they're visual learners. How many of you the other day were visual learners? So Shelby, maybe that's what they have to do. Maybe they're visual learners. I know it's very funny. Can you imagine? Birds that are tactile learners and visual learners, verbal learners, auditory learners. Yep. Ray was, Michaela, Shelby. Some of us were divergent learners. We were multimodal. We had lots of different ways we could learn. Okay, give me a smiley face if you're ready to move on. Give me that smiley emoji if you're ready to move on. Give me a smiley emoji if you're ready to move on. Oh, fantastic. Yes, sir, RC, we got two more paragraphs to read through. Almost there. You're doing great. Almost there. Okay, down we go. RC, good job. Zaleem, good job. Khadija, good job. Here we go. If I haven't heard from you yet, I'd love to know what questions you're coming up with. Okay, here we go. Let's read through Macaws. Macaws are the second most intelligent bird species in the world. 
In fact, their intelligence is thought to be at the same level as a two-year-old. They are capable of logical and predictive thinking. Experiments have shown macaws hide their food if they think another bird might steal from them. They will even go through their food, pick out their favorites, and toss out the lesser liked ones with a swipe of their beaks. It is a favorite fruit or toy is hidden amongst other objects. A macaw will be aware of the trickery and will happily hunt through the jumble to find it. They can even showcase emotions, pouting when denied treats, showing jealousy towards other humans, and often show love through affectionate nibbles. Go ahead and type out your question, your interesting detail, or your connection. I'm going to do the same thing. So my connection I know that killer whales have this same level of intelligence. I know killer whales have about the same intelligence as a two-year-old. Ooh, Michaela, isn't that fascinating? If you were to put a two-year-old up against a trained macaw, who would win? I love it. Would a macaw be nice to another macaw trying to eat their food? Ooh, interesting. What food specifically do they like? Avery, I bet it differs from bird to bird. Just like how the food that you like may not be the same as Kian or Bryce or Jesse or James or even Doreen. How do macaws learn these types of tricks? Do people teach them very good? If they eat too much of their food, will they get obese and not be able to take off? Ha, Jacob. I bet that's true. I bet that one's true. Zora, I agree. It would be cool to do an experiment where you put a macaw in a two-year-old to see who opened the cage first. <laughs> that's funny. I feel like, though, you'd have to show them both how that worked and see who could figure out how to get out. That's funny, Zora. I like that. High five. That's clever. <laughs> That's really funny. What's a macaw's favorite fruit? DJ, same thing. I bet it differs from bird to bird, just like you and your brother. I bet they have to be on a specialized diet, Faiz. I know with my dog, and most dogs in general, if they don't eat their proper food and you give them too much people food, they do gain a lot of weight. So yeah, my guess for you is, is they probably have to be on a specialized macaw-friendly diet. What kind of toys do they like? Khalees, very good. Maybe they like to play with coconuts. Good job, RC. Or maybe they eat coconut. RC, does your bird like coconut? Oh, Aiden, very good. Does it like to stick with the usual toys or do they like new different toys, like a variety of toys? My guess is probably a variety, just like you guys, right? You don't want to play with Barbies your entire life. You probably like to differentiate. Yeah, so RC, good job. I bet maybe they definitely like coconut and probably other fruits too. Okay, give me a text emoji that you're ready to go. Give me a text emoji that you're ready to go and we'll go into this last paragraph. Yes, birds love new toys. Thank you, Lexi. Shelby, Jacob, thank you. Tiana, thank you. Faiz, good. DJ Hamza, thank you. Ray Khadija, thank you. Micah, Michaela, Nils, thank you. Ray, very good. Or Rara, very good. Do they get along with other birds of their species? And can they get along with the same kind of bird? That's a different breed. Very good. Good, good, good. All right, let's do this last one. Here we go. Ravens and crows are frequently considered to be the smartest of the bird family. Logic and puzzle solving comes naturally to these highly intelligent scavengers. These birds can make customized tools, count to five, and have an uncanny memory for human faces, meaning that they can remember you. In fact, they can remember if a specific person is a threat they are second to humans in terms of intelligence and are smarter than apes. In addition to this, 
Some can also imitate human speech, roam around in groups and use gestures, show empathy, and are adaptable. However, it's illegal to own these birds as pets as they are migratory birds that fly long distances and form strong family bonds. So go ahead and type out your question, your interesting detail, or your connection. I'm going to do the same thing. So for me, I wonder what types of birds birds, haha, tools they make and what they use them for. Let's see what you guys came up with. Since ravens are smart, do they straight away think that a human is a predator? That's a good question, Faiz. My guess is they probably wait to see if you're a threat. What do they scavenge for? Good job, Aiden. Are they ca cannibals? Khalees, very good. See, DJ, that was my question, too. Where do grows migrate to? Very good, Jacob. Yeah, see, DJ, you're on my same my path. I thought that, too. What kind of tools do they make? Ooh, Zaleem, good. Do they have a photographic memory? Ha, Zora, that's amazing. So Zora heard a story where a girl fed a crow every day and it would bring her gifts. Cats do that too. Cats will go out and hunt and to show their appreciation and love for you, they'll drop it at your doorstep. Things like lizards and mice and other things like bugs that they find. Oh, Khalees, they are cannibalistic. Yikes. <laughs> That's like bugs. So there's some bugs that are cannibalistic too. I feel like we read something last week that something was cannibalistic. I can't remember what. <laughs> Lexi. Who doesn't want a, a present from their pet? <laughs> so Faiz's question is, what is the average IQ for a crow? Why can't we make these types of birds as pets? Ah, it's because it is a uh, migratory bird. Same reason why you wouldn't keep a dolphin in your bathtub. It's just not going to work out. All right, let's go back up. RC is right. Let's go ahead and change colors. We're going to go ahead and do our main idea. What is each section going to be teaching us about? We'll go ahead and put a little star and give it a little descriptor. Here we go. Give me a smiley face if you're ready to rock. Give me a smiley face if you're ready to rock. Give me a smiley face if you're ready to rock. Give me a smiley face if you're ready to rock. Thank you, thank you. Good job. Thank you, thank you. One is sufficient. Thank you. Don't need multiple. Just one emoji. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we're going to read it one more time. Let's see what we think that this paragraph is trying to teach us. Remember, we're to keep it generalized. Keep it generalized. Here we go. If an intelligent, engaging, and trainable pet bird is what you seek, then there are many species of birds to choose from. All birds are highly intelligent, can learn to solve puzzles, play games, perform tricks, and even vocalize. Some of the most captivating pet bird species are known especially for their teachability. There are a few species, however, that seem to particularly enjoy trick training and performing fun skills, too. What do we think this section is trying to teach us? What is it trying to tell us? What is the overarching idea? Type it in the box. What do you think is the overall idea? Mm 
Michaela's close, Ray's close. Birds are intelligent and therefore what? Birds are intelligent and therefore what? Yeah, they can be taught abilities. Good job, Zaleem. Good. So go ahead and give me a smiley face when you're ready to go to the next paragraph. Give me a smiley face when you're ready to go to the next paragraph. RC, you might need to go tell your mom just to make sure you're good. So give me a smiley face when you're ready to rock and you've written it down. Thank you, Aya, Ray, thank you, DJ, thank you, Micah, thank you, Michaela, Shelby, Salim, thank you, Zora, thank you, Micah, thank you, Jacob, Lexi, thank you. Thank you, Aiden. Javier, thank you. Okay, let's roll down. Okay, let's see what we're trying to learn about Goffin's cockatoos. Here we go. Goffin's cockatoos are not shy birds. Like a typical cockatoo, most enjoy being held, are friendly, and sociable. Goffins can also be a bit mischievous and are quick learners. Don't be surprised to discover when your bird learns to open the cage after seeing you unlatch the lock. A pet Goffins needs a steady supply of toys and appropriate items to chew and destroy. They need toys that challenge, such as puzzle toys, and those that involve taking things apart or undoing knots. These birds do tend to be more needy than other pet parrot species, and an owner should set boundaries early on. Otherwise, the bird might scream for attention. Instead of giving this fun-loving bird nonstop attention, Toys and other enrichment opportunities with some attention will allow the bird to learn to keep itself entertained when its family's, inter uh, when its family's away. So go ahead and type in the box what you think we, the reader, are mostly supposed to get out of this text. What are we supposed to learn? Remember, it's what the entire paragraph is trying to teach us. Not individual little details, but the whole thing. What is the whole thing trying to teach us? Type it in the box. Mm, give me some more. Oh, I, there you go. And what does it do within its intelligence? So how a Goffin's cockatoo uses its intelligence. Very good. What else do we have? Anything else that we see? Go ahead and type it in the box. Anything else that we see? Mm, give me more, Lexi. Give me more. I can say that about anything. So how a Goffin's cockatoo uses its intelligence for what? How a Goffin's cockatoo uses its intelligence for what? So how a Goffin's cockatoo uses its intelligence for what? So how a Goffin's cockatoo, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, so this one's how a Goffin's cockatoo uses its intelligence to stay mentally happy or entertained. Just like for you guys, you don't want to be bored. You want to stay engaged. So this is all about how a Goffin's cockatoo uses its intelligence to stay engaged. Okay, let's go to the next one. I'll leave this here. When you're ready, give me a smiley face and we'll move on. Give me a smiley face and we'll move on. So give me a smiley face and we'll move on. Excellent. Good job. Okay, let's look at the next one. So here we go. We're learning about macaws, and we want to keep in mind, what are we mostly learning about? Here we go. Macaws are the second most intelligent bird species in the world. In fact, their intelligence is thought to be at the same level as a two-year-old child. They are capable of logical and predictive thinking. Experiments have shown macaws hide their food if they think another bird might steal from them. They will even go through their food, pick out their favorites, and toss out the lesser-liked ones with a swipe of their beaks. If it's a favorite fruit or toy is hidden among other objects, a macaw will be aware of the trickery and will happily hunt through the jumble to find it. They can even showcase emotions, pouting when denied treats, showing jealousy towards other humans, and often show love through affectionate nibbles. Type out what you think the main idea is. Remember, it's what is in the whole thing, not just one little sentence, the whole thing. I go deeper than that. That's only one part. I agree with the intelligence part. But think about what the whole thing is teaching us and not just that first part. Main idea is what the whole thing's trying to teach us. So again, Faiz, that's just one sentence. Keep going. So let's combine Jacob's and Ray's. How the macaw uses its intelligence. And we saw it with food, emotions, etc. Good. When you're done writing, give me a smiley face and we'll move on. When you're done, give me a smiley face and we'll move on to the last one. And then we'll look at what our work is for today. Give me a text emoji and we'll move on. Give me a text emoji and we'll move on. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, last one. Ravens and crows are frequently considered to be the smartest of the bird family. Logic and puzzle solving comes naturally to these highly intelligent scavengers. These birds can make customized tools, count to five, and have an uncanny memory for human faces. In fact, they can remember if a specific person is a threat. They are second to humans in terms of intelligence and are smarter than apes. In addition to this, some can also imitate human speech, roam around in groups, use gestures, show empathy towards each other, and are adaptable. However, it is illegal to own these birds as pets as they are migratory birds that fly long distances and form strong family bonds. Type in the box what you think the... Main idea here, 
And remember, think about what the other paragraphs were too and apply it here. What would the main idea of this article be or this paragraph? How what birds? I be specific. How what birds? Be specific. So Zaleem, that's one fact. Go bigger. Think about the main ideas from the other paragraphs too. Zor, good, yes. How intelligent ravens and crows are and how they use their we'll call it smarts because it's funny good so let's scroll down okay rc come right back please Though better yet, if you could wait, that'd be cool. But if not, it's all good. So just like yesterday and the day before, you're going to have four questions. Let's look at the first one first. So that way there's an example. It says, due to their high intelligence, what are birds capable of doing? Does this talk about a specific bird or birds in general? Type it in the box. Does this question ask us for birds in general or a specific bird? Birds in general? Or a specific bird. So type it in the box. Birds in general or a specific bird. Birds in general or a specific bird. Which one is it? Good, Alexa. Yes, birds in general. So if we're talking about birds in general, Javier, very good. Jacob, very good. What paragraph should we be going to? One, two, three, or four to find this answer. If we're talking about generalized birds, what paragraph should we be going to? One, two, three, or four. Type it in the box. If we're talking about birds in general, where should we go? One, two, three, or four. If we're trying to find where should we go? One, two, three, four. Ooh, I see numbers rolling in. Yes. Very good, guys. Ali, good. Faiz, DJ, good. Faiz, I only need it once. Josiah, yes, one. Very good, everyone. So let's go up to one. Okay, based on the text, what are these birds capable of doing because they're smart? What are these birds capable of doing because they are so smart? What can they do? Type it out. What sentence do I want to highlight? What can they do? Yeah, so we want the one where it talks about puzzles and games. So I'm going to go ahead and come in and I'll underline this part. Good. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to write down my text. According to the text. comma, quote, and then I'm going to pull that exact quote that I just underlined. All birds are highly intelligent comma, can learn to solve puzzles Play games perform tricks
and even vocalize. Period, end quote. So you are going to have the other three to do today. Why is it not possible to hide a favorite fruit from a macaw? If I'm looking for the macaw paragraph, what paragraph should I go to? One, two, three, or four. If I'm looking for information on a macaw, what paragraph should I go to? If I'm looking for information on a macaw, what paragraph should I go to? Yes, three, because three talks about macaws. Very good. Okay, so you have one, two, three. RC, good job jumping on back. You have three questions to do. I'll stay here if you have questions, but if you're good to go, go ahead and give me a text emoji. And I will see you again at 1.15. I will see you again at 1.15. What time am I going to see you at? 1.15. Or sorry, 1.10, just kidding. Ha ha, 1.10. I know you guys like to use that red thing. Ha ha. So I'm going to see you again at 1.10. 1.10. Just kidding. 1.10. 10.15 is our earlier one. One ten. I know you guys like to use that red thing. One ten. If you come at one fifteen, that's fine. I won't hold it against you. I goofed. <laughs> there you go. Yes. One ten. Woohoo. One ten. I'll see you at one ten. If anyone has any questions, you can stay here. One ten. I'll see you at one ten. I know, Sama. Ha <laughs> ha. Ms. Young goofed. Cool. I'm not a robot. It's all good. Bye, everybody. Looks like we're all good to go. Bye. Oh, I, yes. Go ahead and talk. Ask your question. Muy bien, Guy. Yes, 110. Adios, Guy. Bye. One ten. Bye, Aiden. All righty. Bye, everybody. Have a good afternoon. I will see you at one ten. I'm going to go ahead and close down the chat box. All right. Bye, friends. I'll see you at 110.